friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card combining a whole bunch of Lawn Fawn sets, including Year 4, Year 2, Critters in the Jungle, Totally Awesome, Party Animal, Chit Chat, A Bug Deal, and Bicycle Built for You. So I stamped out my images on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I didn't have room for one of the balloon clusters, so I stamped that on additional sheet of paper. But I'm going to jump right in with my Copic coloring, and I'm going to start with my Hippo. And I wanted him to have a little pink undertone on his nose and belly, so I did that with RV10. And then I'm going in with my brown tones. I'm using E70, E71, and E74. And I'm going to color right over that because I wanted that pinky tone to just be kind of underneath these browns. So I'm using that E74 first to lay in my shadows. These brown tones have a lot of gray in them, so I thought they would be perfect for this hippo. So once I have my shadows laid in, I'm going to start to blend them out with the E71, just coloring right over the edge of that E74 and getting that pigment broken up so that I have some nice smooth blending and I can eliminate any harsh lines. And then I will come in with the E70 and I'm going to fill in the rest of him. And like I said, I'm coloring right over that pink. I just wanted it to be just barely there under the surface. If you Google photos of hippos, they often do have that pink area on their underbelly and their face. So I thought that that would be um, nice to represent it there. Then I'm going to come in and do some dot detail. I'm adding the E77 in for that and just adding a few little freckles and uh, spots that just give him some more personality. And then I'll also add a few more with the E74. And I wanted those to get pushed back just a little bit as well. So I did go over them with the E70 just kind of um, softly blend them in a bit so they weren't quite so prominent. Now I'm going to move on to my turtle and I'm going to have a lot of greens on this card with all of those leaves. So I wanted to do my turtle in a different palette. I didn't want to use greens for him at all. So I decided to go with browns and I picked E21, E23, E25 and E27. So I started with the E27, kind of filling in the gaps between each of the plates of his shell. And then for the plates, I'm starting with the E25 and adding a bit of shading at the bottom of each of those. And then I'm blending up with the E23 and saving a little room at the top of each of those little sections for the E21. When I color turtles, I always gravitate towards greens, but when you look at them in nature, they usually are brown or black or a combination thereof. So I do think this works, and especially when we get towards the end of the card, when he starts to contrast against all of those greens. So now I'm moving on to the body of him and I decided to go with kind of a black. So I pulled out W3, W5, and W7. And I used the W7 first for some shading. I'm blending forward on him with the W5. So my shading is on the left. And my um, highlights are on the right. So I'll use the W3 to kind of lighten up his face area and make sure his features are still nice and visible. Then I'm going to add a little bit of color to my birds. I wanted them to be kind of white like egrets. So I used W00 and W1 and just added a tiny bit of shading to them. And then I'm also going to color in one of the balloons in each cluster. 
So I'll be doing the second cluster of balloons off screen since that's on a separate sheet of paper, but I'll be using the same exact color palette as I use on this one, just on different balloons. So now I'm going to pull in my first green combo. I wanted to have a couple different greens on this card since there's a lot of foliage. Um, the first one I'm doing is G43, G94, and G99. I wanted something that had a really olive-y tone to it. Um, so this worked really well. And I started with the G99 and added some shading in the center where those leaves are clustered together and also accentuated the line down the center of each leaf. And then I'm going to blend that out with the G94 and um, just kind of leave a little bit of space on the tips of each leaf for that G43. And because I'm going to be doing several um, of each of these leaves, at least two of each, I will only show one on screen just to keep it a little bit shorter for you guys. Um, I just thought, you know, since I'm coloring them exactly the same, that would save you a little bit of time. I will use this same green combo for the lily pads. So I'm going to color one of them with the shading on the bottom and the other one with the shading on the top. And that's just so that I can flip them in opposite directions when I get to the card to make them look a little bit different so that little cutout isn't on the same side. And uh, I did leave both of these in the video because they were pretty small and it was just really quick and easy to use each marker, you know, twice before I switch to the next color. So I did those. I left a little bit more space for that G43 to really lighten and brighten things up on there. And then I'm going to move on to my next green combo, which is YG13, YG17, and G46. So I'm going to color in these larger leaves now and I'm using that G46 to, again, draw a line down the center of the leaf and just uh, really draw the eye to that part of it and make it look kind of creased. I'm also adding a little G46 on the bottom of each of those sections. And then I'm blending that out with the YG17 and then filling in the top of each of the sections with the YG13. And again, that just creates that nice, bright, vibrant green um, that almost has a little bit of a glow to it. So I did all the other leaves, large and small, that looked the same. And then for the leaf on top of the cupcake, I just wanted a step down. So I took away the G46 and added in the YG11. Next, I wanted to bring in some yellows. I picked Y11. Y13 and Y15 and I'm going to do the beaks of my little birds with the darkest two shades. I'm also going to color in the party hat. I'm going to color around those polka dots and leave those white for now. I use the Y15 first and then the Y13 and then the Y11. I also added a little color to the water lily with the Y11. I'm going to color in my little present with these shades as well. I just put my darkest shadow on the bottom of the gift and I'm blending toward the top where the sun would hit. And I'll do the frosting on my cupcake with these shades as well. So the yellow and then the next shade that I'm going to be bringing in, um, I wanted to kind of tie my whole card together with these shades. So I'm going to do a balloon in my balloon cluster as well. And it's just going to make everything look really cohesive and pull the whole scene together to have this kind of limited color palette um, where you see these pops of color represented all over the card. So the other color that I'm going to bring in is pink and I'm using RV13, RV14, and RV17. So I'll do the tassel on the party hat and the polka dots as well. 
I'm going to do the bow on my gift, just adding a little of that RV17 at the bottom and then also where the little ribbon is kind of clustered together for the bow. I'm going to do my last little balloon at the same exact time because it's such a little area because it's the one that's behind. So I just did both of those at the same exact time. And then to add a little variation, I'm going to uh, just switch to a lighter version of these pinks. I'm using RV10 and RV11, and I colored the cupcake liner on the cupcake. I'm also going to add a tiny bit of shading to the water lily with the RV10, and I'm going to give all of my critters some rosy cheeks. So I used the RV11 first for that and then just kind of went around the edges with the RV10 to soften that into their skin tone. For the hippo and the turtle, I did go back and add a little RV13 in there um, just to kind of darken that up since they were much darker colors and the lighter shades didn't really show up. So once I'm finished with that, I'm going to trim these out with the matching dies. And then I have cut out several pieces of cardstock. I used Noble Fur and die cut that with the Bayou Backdrop. For the pond part, I used Mermaid and then added in some Ocean Wave accents to give me some little slits in there. I also used the Grassy Border on some Cilantro cardstock. And then I've created a card base out of sticky note cardstock. It's just a standard A2 size card. It is five and a half wide by four and a quarter tall. So I'm going to start by adhering my grass panel first. I'm lining that up with the bottom of my card front. Just making sure that that's on there nice and straight. And then I'm going to add my Bayou Backdrops frame over top of that. So I'm just adding a thin bead of glue all the way around. I'm not going to bother adhering the little dangly parts because I want to have some of those um, kind of hanging over some of the images. So I didn't adhere those down. The pond or lake I'm going to set aside for now. I'll come back to that in just a minute. But first I want to stamp my sentiment. I'm using plastic flamingo ink to stamp. Hippo Birdie to You, which is the sentiment that comes with year four. And I'm just doing that on another white piece of cardstock. And then I'll pop my card base in my Misty. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the inside in Sunflower Ink. And I'm doing another little critter that's going to be coming to this jungle birthday party. And it's the snake from Critters in the Jungle. I added two leaves on the sentiment that says, you're the best. So now I'm ready to go back to the front and I'm going to adhere that pond. But first I want to tuck my hippo down inside so he can look like he's swimming. I just held him in place with a little piece of post-it tape. And then I'll add some liquid glue to the back of that. I'm going to make sure not to add any glue to the little cutouts so it doesn't seep through. And um, also a little bit to the back of the hippo. And then I'm going to tuck that so that some of those little vines are hanging down over in front of the pond. So it kind of pushes that pond back a little bit further in the scene. And then I'm going to begin to arrange some of these leaves into clusters down at the front two corners of the card. So I'm going to start on the left hand side. I'm going to do that kind of palm looking uh, plant and then I'll add one of the big leaves and one of the small leaves kind of poking out from behind that. And because that's overlapping the pond, that also pushes that back further in the scene and gives me some more dimension. And then I'll take one of the balloon clusters and tuck it into the space between the large and small leaf. And I'm trying to pull some of those vines and have them hanging in front of the balloons as well, just to, you know, really incorporate everything and make it look um, you know, like all part of a little story here. 
So I'm going to repeat this on the other side. I'm going to create some balance by arranging these two clusters exactly the same. So this time I'll have the bigger leaf on the right hand side and then I will add the smaller leaf. So it's kind of like the mirror image there. Then I'll grab my other balloon cluster and tuck that in to the space between those leaves again, lifting up some of those vines so that they hang down in front and just kind of seeing how I like that. I ended up not liking the really long one in front, so I tucked that one behind and had the shorter one next to it kind of hanging in front because um, it just covered up too much of that balloon there. So now I'm going to grab these little lily pads and um, I have to work kind of quickly because that glue is already starting to dry. So I want to pick up those balloons and slide that lily pad into the area behind there. That's going to again add some more depth into the scene because it just continues pushing anything that's in the background even further back. And then I'll add the other lily pad on the other side. So I ended up kind of covering up the two little waves that I had die cut into the edges of that pond, but that's okay. <laughs> you don't know until you start to uh, add your images how exactly it's going to turn out. And because that one in front was kind of, it got kind of twisted and I didn't like how the wave was, I went ahead and layered the water lily over top part of that. Then I'll add my turtle down at the bottom on the left hand side and after him I'll add the cupcake. On the turtle's back I wanted to add the gift. So the story behind this little scene here is that it is the hippo's birthday and his little friends are kind of throwing him a surprise party. So the hippo is going to get the birthday hat. And then I'm going to have the one little egret sitting in front of the cupcake. So that's his contribution to the little party. And then the other little egret I decided to have kind of riding into the party on the hippo's back. So he was the one who was responsible for keeping hippo away until the party was all set up. And then he's kind of coming in with his friend. So I'm going to add my sentiment, which I die cut with one of the everyday sentiment banners. And I wanted it to be kind of tucked under some of those uh, vines. Um, in the end, I didn't really like how it looked because it covered up too much of the words and it didn't really make it clear to read. So I decided to just pull that back up and add it over top and have that be kind of like the party banner. As a final embellishment, I'm going to add some Stardust Stickles. I decided to add a bit of glitter to each of the balloons. So I'm just kind of squeezing out a little bit and spreading that around with the nozzle. I also added some to all of the pink parts on the party hat, so the little streamers and also the polka dots. And then of course the balloons on the other side as well. I also added a little bit to the top part of the cupcake and to the bow on the party gift. And I did add just a little bit to the water lily as well. So this one really has a good bit of sparkle when you pick it up and catch the light. And uh, there is another peek at the inside as well. I had the concept for this card in my head for a really long time, so I had such a blast bringing it to life today. I hope that you enjoyed it too. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here's a couple extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.